Hi everyone and welcome to Football Syrupus for the second episode of this series on cognitive biases in, in football. So if you haven't seen the first episode yet, I suggest you do so before watching this one. Today we're going to talk about coaches and youth development, but above all scouting first, uh, an area I've already covered in, in depth with my two videos on the recruitment process of Sevilla FC, uh, a club that seeks to have as much useful information as possible on their target players to, to then make the, the right choice. Even if it even if, even if it, it's surely uh, the, the model to, fo to follow, it, it seems like scouting will al always suffer from the rep representativeness bias, a bias that makes us give too much importance to what we've observed and memorized. The, the best example of this bias com comes from the book uh, Soconomics, which I recommend you read, where it, where it is explained that um, a big English club noticed that its scouts uh, used to give blonde players better reports than for others, whereas I expect in Scandinavia the, the percentage of blondes per population is generally, generally not very high. The presumed reason uh, this hair color is more eye-catching, so that their contribution, uh, the performance, then stands out more. In the same idea, uh, the nationality of players is an information that can have a great influence of the, on, the, on the judgment of, of the player. For the same book, uh, one agent said that it, it is much easier to sell a, a bad Brazilian than a good Mexican, because it's a nationality that imposes a certain authority in the brain. I also have the impression that this mechanism, this mechanism t can take place with other information about the player in question as well, such as his communication on social networks, uh, his nickname or the appearance, uh, the appearance of, of his body, including his skin color. Before I show you the, the video of a situation where two Premier League players are fighting for the same ball, I'd like to briefly introduce them to you. On the one hand, we have Carlos Sanchez, uh, born in the poorest um, department of Colombia, a midfielder who considers himself very strong, both physically and mentally, and who weighs uh, 80, 82 kilograms. And it's therefore no surprise his, nick his nickname is La Roca, the Rock. At 1 meter uh, 82 tall, he outweighs uh, J Jamie Vardy, the other player in question, by several centimeters, but more importantly by several kilos. The Englishman, weighing only uh, about 74-76 uh, kilograms. And although the, the Colombian rarely publishes photos of himself in the gym, you can still suggest that he does, he does go there re regularly, unlike Jamie Vardy, who said he, he doesn't go there, even though people try to, to get him in. <laughs> It's quite funny, yeah. So, even if he still wasn't well known at this fifth league game uh, of Leicester's w title winning season, Vardy did win his duel with Carlos Sanchez. A lighter, a lighter player can therefore move a, a heavier opponent by coming at him with sufficient speed and by directing well his body weight, but it would also be a mistake to believe that a player will win many aerial, aerial duels simply because he is relatively tall. This is a complete neglect of the, of the real conditions for being good at it, good at, at heading, namely. To estimate the trajectory of the ball well, to uh, arrive at the right moment at the right place by, jump, by jumping at the right height and then to send the ball where it's needed with the right strengths. This shows that in order to fully judge, um, judge a, a player, um, including his physical skills, you have to see him on a field in different contexts, and not only with clips where you only see his actions with, with the ball. Segmentation is reminiscent of, of the highlights match videos, which can also bias us as, as well by making us look uh, positively as, at the forwards and negatively at, at the defenders. But now let's talk about coaches, since they too can be advantage or disadvantage by these cognitive biases. Their image uh, indeed plays a, a role when the club starts to think about um, a possible dismissal, as well as when it comes to hiring a new, a new one. 
The most telling case is surely that of Andrea Pirlo, who was chosen to manage Juventus with the sole experience of having coached the Turin club's reserve team during the preseason the, the previous months. Obviously, he, he had passed his coaching qualif qualifications, but he must have been well helped by the class that he, embody he embodies. I'm thinking here in particular of the style of player he was, one of the best midfielders, uh, best midfielders uh, who was precisely known for his game intelligence. But he's a player who understands the game well, by nature uh, a good coach. I would say that he has more potential than other players to adapt his team to the opponent, including during the, the game, but that, that is only one part of the coach's job, as you also have to be able to transmit motivation and ideas to the players, especially by uh, planning each training session in detail. So, Pelo may well become a great coach, but it is undone, undeniable that his appointment to the head of, of one of the best teams in Italy was quite irrational, as he simply hadn't hadn't proved uh, his value, he hadn't had the opportunity to significantly improve the level of a team and its players before. Not to mention that a certain amount of, uh, of experience is also needed to, to improve the details of, of this daily work uh, that, that can make uh, the difference in the end. As for the coaches working in academies, often themselves re responsi responsible for talent identification, they must be aware of what is called relative age. The fact that two children of the same age can have different physical development and growth, uh, especially as a kid born on December uh, 31 of a year, generally finds himself playing against children who may have been born on the 1st of January of the same year, so that these two aspects explain in particular the, the different size in the, the difference in, in size that can be found on the, on the pitches from, from the age of 12 onwards, an age at which uh, some players are already starting to grow a lot. It is therefore necessary to be careful not to be too impressed by actions that, that are resolved almost solely by, by this physical difference. It's above all the, the technical and tactical skills that should indeed take precedence during the lessons. Because the aim of an academy is to train youngsters not to win the abs not to absolutely win the, the U12 champ championship, which which means you have to choose the the kids with the greatest potential and therefore not necessarily the best at the age of 12. Training youngsters and coaching a club's first team really is different. In one case, an analysis of the opponent is the opposition is ideally done to be able to adapt the week's training sessions uh, according to the likely game situations that will take place, whereas in the other, no matter how the opponents play at the weekend, there should ideally be a, a real training program that has to be followed so that all the players can assimilate the different game uh, concepts that exist. I've already presented uh, several of them on, on the channel with a playlist uh, dedicated to, to, to this subject. To this, to this game concept. Because just like the game situations that we try to provoke in training, this learning must take place once in the life of the footballers so that they can, in the long run, improve their decision and their decision making on the, on the field. Because once, uh, once they are in a big noisy stadium, they, they will have to choose their position, their body orientation or the player who to whom the ball uh, should be given. This is why it's important not to try to control the academy players too much, uh, especially the ball carrier, because they must also learn to recognize the elements necessary for these decisions in themselves. That's it for me. Uh, don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel to make sure you don't miss similar content. And if you liked the video, don't forget to drop me a like, tell me in the comments and share the video with another football nerd. It will really help me a lot more than you think. Bye-bye.